sipping on a good malt single with single malt whiskey, which kind of made him my kind of person. But anyways, that's another story. Uh, so his session today will be. He will give us more information um, on hack attempts and how we can have a good understanding on what hack attempts are and how they work. He has a company called Press84 that deals with such things, so I'm sure he has a lot of interesting things to share with us. So welcome, Rekard, Brecht Rekard. Yes, yeah, okay. everybody's hearing me all right, okay. Um, first time I'm, uh, I'm going to try something. I hope I don't pronounce it badly, but um, Zdrasti as Rikas van Brecht. <laughs> For everyone else. Hi, I'm um, Brecht. So I've been doing WordPress basically since 2005, version 1.5. Started out as an end user. Um, So I started out as a, an end user, um, just creating some sites for me about my hobbies, about uh, a group of friends uh, which I used to play basket with and things like that. So all just basic stuff and gradually that advanced to just making some minor code tweaks. Uh, I grew into somewhat of a, a hobby dev um, and then back in 2008 I started working at a hosting company as a uh, senior as a support engineer eventually I grew into a senior support engineer and uh, besides working there I started my own company uh, back in 2010 so um, that's basically my my background uh, with what I do on WordPress um, so you can find me on uh, Twitter at at Brechtijkaart. You can find my uh, personal site at Brechtijkaart.com and my company site at Press84.com. Now, let's talk about hacking. First and foremost, but just by show of hands, who's here because he or she has been hacked before? There's not a lot of hands, which is actually fairly good news. I'm happy about that. Now, there's um, one common misconception I would like to end right here, right now, today, and that is, you're not the target. And also, it's a good thing. Now, why is that? Basically, the better part of all hacks are fully automated. So, they happen through leaks in plugins, leaks in teams, uh, leaks in core, um, often also leaks in server software, uh, if it's not kept up to date. Um, but also things like brute forcing. So there are many techniques that hackers can use to get access to your website. Now there's good news here as well, because automated hacks are usually easier to stop. If you're not a personal target, if they're not just targeting you and your specific site, Usually they're just using a very common technique or a known leak or whatever. And that means it's easier to fix, easier to, to halt. And in most cases it could be as simple as updating a team, a plugin, updating core, changing passwords, um, just updating your server software if you manage your server stack yourself, or adding a rule to your website application firewall. Now, how does hacking go about? How does it work? Um, there's a number of types of attacks. Most, well, not the most common ones, but uh, ones I see often are SQL injections, brute forcing, but sadly, there's quite a number more of different types of attacks. And I'm not going to be able to go I'm uh, not going to be able to go over all of them, but I'll just highlight uh, two and just give a really basic explanation. So, an SQL injection is actually a hack that uh, targets the database directly. It, it attempts to inject a, a certain amount of code into the database, a certain amount of data. It could be a, a new user that's being created, uh, anything like that. Um, and usually, it's caused by a lack of input validation uh, in the code. 
So, to put it simply, this would be a good example of SQL injections. Then there's another fairly common one, which is a brute forcing attempt. It's basically what you see in the logs, just post after post after post to the wp-login.php, just attempting another username and password combination until they find one. And in most cases, hackers use like, it's, it's called the rainbow tables. It's, it are huge files containing uh, the most common usernames, the most common passwords, and they just fire every single attempt to your site. So these things are fairly easy to stop. You could block the IP. Uh, you could, uh, yeah, you could basically do <laughs> quite a lot of things. But blocking the IP would probably be the quickest and most effective way to do it. But if it's not clear for anyone what a brute forcing attack would be. Imagine doing this when meeting an old colleague. Just randomly trouting names out uh, until the guy says yes. That would basically be a brute forcing attack. Now, of course, we're here for some real life examples. Uh, and before we start, I would like to make a disclaimer. Um, we're not here to make fun of anyone. Uh, we're not here to laugh, to point the finger at anyone. We're lear trying to learn from some mistakes that were made and have been since corrected. So, does anyone remember this one? 2014 was a very interesting year for this, uh, this plugin. It was a massive hack. Um, the, case, the hacking in this case was a local file inclusion, so making actually the files accessible through the hack, and it had a massive impact. Like when this hack or this vulnerability was discovered, within a couple of months we had, uh, I think uh, at that point uh, the shared hosting account uh, or the shared hosting cluster I was helping to manage uh, had about. 60,000 active accounts, something like that, and a couple of months in, we've already seen over 10,000 sites hacked like by this. So the impact was immense. Now, the problem with this plugin was this. So this is a fictional path, but in essence, the plugin would do an action, show image, and then the full path was actually used in the URL. Now, this would be the problem, the full path, because can anyone just imagine what would have happened if you would have done this? Anyone? Yeah? Well, you can just access everything. Yeah. You can basically access everything from there. Yeah, and with this specific one? You have an idea? It actually, it would have downloaded your WP config. And if you have the WP config, you have the database access, you have the salts, you have basically everything. So this was a massive, massive problem. They fixed it just by providing an update, which was cool, which was good, but kind of bad that this happened. So yeah, we spoke of that. In the logs, you could see something like this happening, and yeah. At that point, you already know, okay, I'm a victim. Uh, they had me. A second, more recent example, uh, WP GDPR compliance plugin. Uh, gave many among us uh, quite some headache, uh, including me. This was just, uh, I think, around the 7th of November. Um, and this was a privileged escalation issue. This was actually a bit uh, more complex, uh, not as easy to execute as the previous one. Um, so there was a, 
lack of a cap uh, capability check uh, on the save setting, and you could abuse the do action command or function. So in the logs, you would see things like this. So they would do some posts to the admin Ajax, uh, just altering some settings because it was not checked. And then even though you had user registration completely disabled, they were able to action register and then validate and they had access. And then again, when they're in your backend, basically they have access to everything. Now, why my website? Why is my website being hacked? Is being attacked? Again, it's nothing personal. Not at all. Has anyone ever heard about dorks? Just by show of hands? Nope? Okay, cool. Uh, so, they're the best friend of a script kitty. Um, it's a way of by, for example, abusing Google to identify possible targets. So, let's go back to our ref slider example. At the top, in the search bar, you'll see a specific dork. It's just a basic search command. But if you use that, the results are that you get a list of sites. This was done on google.be because I'm from Belgium. So mostly .be sites here, um, which are actually disclosing that they are running RefSlider. This will not tell you anything about the version they're running, but it will tell you that it is running RefSlider. This, this one as well. So this is another variation on the same dork. Just helps you identify sites that run RefSlider in this case. So these are the dorks that uh, were used to generate these screenshots. The results. The thing is, if you're able to use Google to generate lists of sites that have this plugin active, you're also probably going to be able as a script kitty to write some Python script or something like that to scrape the results and add them in a text file. And then it's just running your script against your list of URLs, your list of domains, and you can easily start abusing this. So, preventing hacks. Um, this is actually an interesting one because some people tend to think that preventing hacks is strictly something that should be done by the user. Others think it's something that strictly needs to be done by the developer or the hoster or anyone involved in the process of getting your WordPress site online. And actually, and that's the hard part uh, of securing a site, it's a cooperation. It's a cooperation between all parties involved. Um, let me, let me put it like this. You could have a top-notch hoster which tightens every loophole, uh, makes sure that it's completely secured. You could use, as an end user, uh, the best security techniques on your PC, on the, uh, on the password level. So using password uh, security programs, uh, generating really complex passwords, storing them securely, making sure you have the best security software on your computer, but still, in the end, if you're using a plugin that has a major issue or a major leak, you'll still be prone to be hacked. So you're, you're still going to be subject to hacking. So it's a shared responsibility of us all, not just the people who make WordPress or plugins or teams, but also of the end user and the people who are hosting it. And that's why I try to give some f a few tips, let's, uh, let's put it like that, on how to improve this, because if we don't cooperate, we're going to see a lot more hacks in the future, and especially with um, a, a revamp of WordPress coming in 5.0 with Gutenberg, I'm kind of wary at this point to see how this will turn out security-wise, because a lot of plugins and teams will need to be altered, and 
the impact of that could result in some new, new leaks. So uh, I'm on, on watch uh, to see what happens. So if you're a developer, um, this probably is going to be basic, but if you're using input of any kind, please sanitize it. Um, be very aware of the functions you use, the hooks you use, uh, fall back on the codex because these are the kind of things that um, will make an impact. And, and this one is often forgotten, um, do code reviewing. So I mean this on different levels. Like uh, I know, for example, that a, the company Yoast, which makes the SEO plugin, has their code reviewed uh, by one of the, the more um, popular security firms. And they do this for basically every release. But it doesn't have, you don't have to even invest those kinds of amounts to get your, uh, your code secure. Just do peer reviewing. Have a colleague go over your code, uh, you go over his code, learn from each other. You, a second pair of eyes will always find something you will have missed. And this way we can make our code a little bit better or a little bit more secure. The same goes for system administrators, people who run the servers. Um, make sure you have the best security tools installed and oper uh, operating on your servers. I'm talking about mod security as a uh, par partial uh, website application firewall. Uh, use OWASP, use OSSEC. Uh, Patchman, for example, is a commercial product as opposed to the other ones, but also a very great product that will help patch old leaks. Um, so those are things that can be done on that level and that most hosting companies will do to keep your site safe. And then there's the end user. Um, I think we have a problem with WordPress, and that is that it's very easy to use. It's accessible. It's um, easy to understand. There's no steep learning curve. The problem there is that it's almost too easy. Now, things are being done within WordPress, like suggesting a stronger password, obviously. Um, but it still isn't always enough to prevent the end user from doing, well, let's say things that don't really comply with best practices. Uh, so, for example, uh, at the company I work for, where we, um, when we do an install of WordPress and an automated install, we make sure it's a complex username. What do we often see? The user comes in, logs in with the, the first time, creates a new administrator user called admin. You can't prevent these things, but it is, it is important that our end users are educated and point or that the risks of using these kind of simple and generic usernames are actually uh, known to them because that's also already a part of the hack and updates um, as uh, former uh, Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer would have put it, updates, 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 really. I can't stress this enough. Because if you look just at the statistics, a huge percentage of all hacks come from outdated core versions, outdated teams, outdated plugins. So please, please, please keep on updating your WordPress setup, everything you need. And that will keep, help keep you safe. Um, and well, then of course there are the the other practices like installing a decent security plugin. It will help. It won't fix everything, but it will help. And that's basically what we need to do. Uh, and a bit sooner than I was expecting, I'm actually already at the Q and A. So if there's anyone with questions. Okay, we have first question here. Hello. Hi. Um, you've shown us the example for the uh, for the slider plugin that mm -hmm. it can be listed in, in Google. Mm -hmm. 
How can we prevent uh, Google indexing our plugin lists or plugin directory, maybe? Well, there are a few ways you could do that uh, by, um, for example, just setting some blocking rules via the, the HD access uh, by user agent, so using the user agent of the Google Crawler, <laughs> for example. Um, there are a couple of other ways. The problem there would be if you would use, for example, Yoast SEO, which integrates nicely with the Google services, if you do that kind of blocking, that would also ha have a negative effect on the operation of, of the Yoast SEO plugin. So in this case, it would be choosing the work or the least uh, least bad solution, I would say. So the lesser of two evils. That was the, the, the term I was looking for. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? I have one question here. What? Oh. I have one. <laughs> um, in your opinion, as a security expert, um, what advice will you give to someone that don't have a lot of technical experience but is an owner, let's say, of a few small websites? If they, well, it would depend. Um, if they have the budget, um, hire someone. Hire someone. Exactly, um, or um, outsource the security part to a company specialized in this. If you do not have the um, the budget to to do that, um, obviously um, get a good security plugin, not a free one. Get, go for a premium solution. Um, check with your hoster because usually they also have some extra um, security techniques or services that could be enabled that aren't on by default, for example, um, could help out as well. Um, but it would actually come down to just checking the site, um, perhaps reducing the number of plugins to a minimum. Just don't use anything you don't need to use, per se, um, because every extra plugin would be an extra chance for a loophole or a leak. Um, same with Teams. Things you don't, you have in your, in your setup that are inactive, remove them. Um, choose good passwords, just there's actually a bunch of, um, of information out on the subject, uh, several good blog posts, um, I might try and tweet some of those uh, later on today, um, but it would actually all depend on how the sites are built, because you can, for example, do a, a security of a uh, nearly static uh, corporate site, for example, in a completely different way than, for example, a WooCommerce-based site, because the usage uh, scenario will be different, and um, that will also have an impact on how to secure the website. So um, there's no clear answer. It would depend on the website, um, but if there's there's a lot of guys uh, who are active in security for WordPress specifically, if you reach out to them, either at the WordCamp, a meetup whatever, they will help you. Uh, so, same goes for me as well. If you want to, I'll just talk with you afterwards and I'll give you some tips. Thanks. Okay. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, I have uh, this question. Uh, okay, if you hacked, or for example, anybody, me. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you understand from where the hack came from? FTP, uh, or anywhere. Well, um, when I see a hack or I get a report of a hacked site, um, basically what I would do first is just checking what the impact of the hack would be. Uh, so to see if there are files altered or something like that, um, if it's Steam files, if it's an, an indication or this might be in the database or this might be there. And if it would be something that would be traceable in the files, I would then connect over SSH to the server. Uh, do a file listing, see what the timestamp was on the file so for the last alteration. And then I would go into the logs and see if there's something that can co we can correlate to that specific time. That, in 90% of the cases, will give you a good indication of when and how uh, the hack was performed. So, the, for example, the... Um, I'm just going back a couple of slides here. This one. 
for example, if uh, one of the uh, sites was using a REST slider, in this case, we would have seen, okay, um, site, the, height, and the site would have been altered after, let's say, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And if we see this happening at 1.45 in the afternoon, we'll have a pretty good idea. This would be pretty close to the actual time of change in the logs, and it'll show you that they actually requested the WP config file. So that would be a, a rather clear indication of okay, this is the type of hack that has happened. And then it comes down to running scans, seeing what exactly was altered, and restoring or um, or just changing the, the, the altered files. Hey, Brian. Uh, what do you think about plugins that rename the LP admin for uh, the URL itself? Do you think them as helpful in such case or not really? Well, it um, basically you're talking about security through obscurity. So um, securing something by hiding it. I'm not opposed to it, but I don't see it as a valid primary measure. You can add it as a secondary measure, sure, but. As a primary measure, um, I wouldn't base my sole security strategy on that technique, though. Okay, another question here? Sure. Hi, Britt. Uh, Hi. Oh, that's loud. Uh, firstly, thanks very much. Um, you mentioned uh, something about WordPress 5 coming out. I have concerns about updating websites to 5 mm -hmm. and holding back. Mm -hmm. Is it your recommendation to do that? And what are the potential effects that WordPress 5 will have on security? Well, that's the question, to be honest. Um, I, with my own company, I manage uh, and I do maintenance and, and manage security for, uh, for one specific client who has over a couple of hundred sites. Um, all types of sites, web shop, corporate sites, you name it. Um, as soon as WordPress 5.0 comes out, I won't be updating right away. No way. Um, I'm at least going to hold out for a couple of days so we can see which uh, plugins and teams get broken. Um, if there are leaks occurring now, uh, because usually whenever there's a new leak in WordPress in a major release, it's found to rather, rather quickly. People are, the, the code is open, it's open source, so people are digging in to see is there something we can exploit, both white hat and black hat hackers. So um, I think in this case, I, it's kind of, kind of counterproductive to advise people not to update, because in most cases, updates are so essential. But in this case, we're changing the entire editor, which has a major impact. Um, so in this case, Specifically for, for WordPress 5.0, I would give the advice, wait two to four, five days, something like that. Just hold out to see what the initial problems are, if there are major issues or minor issues. And uh, if it's a major issue, we'll know about it right away. So um, I, I would suggest holding out just a couple of days. That's usually what I do if there's a major release of a plugin or WordPress or routine, anything that needs to be updated. I tend to wait 48 hours just to see if anything happens. Um, you can run tests yourself, but in this case, kind of crowdsourcing it would be good. So it's good to take a look yourself, but know that other people will also be looking, and out of all those tests, something will arise. So I hope it answers your question. Any other questions? Okay, if that's all, thank you, Brecht.